right, folks. C for comedy. A for Abbott. M for Maxwell. E for Ennis. L for Lou Costello. Yes, they spell camel. Your taste will tell you about camel's rich, full flavor. Your throat will welcome camel's cool mildness. So draw up a chair for tonight's camel show, starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. <laughs> I saw you talking to uh, some city slickers downstairs. Now, I hope you didn't didn't let them sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. Them sell me the Brooklyn Bridge? Yeah. Not me, Abbott. They tried to sell me the Brooklyn Bridge for $10,000. Yeah. But I didn't buy it. Good boy. I bought the George Washington Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Not sell you're impossible. You're a disgrace to the Abbott family. Hmm. Why, we Abbots belong to the upper crust, you know. You Abbots are a bunch of crumbs. I hear now. Hey, Costello's are a high-class family, Abbott. What do you mean? The Costello's are the only family in Patterson, New Jersey... Whose garbage is gift wrapped? Oh, hold on. That's ridiculous. Oh, is that so? And the Costello's are very wealthy, too. Their mean? house has a 14 carat living room, a 14 carat dining room, and five 14 carat bedrooms. Solid gold? Nope, solid carrots. Solid carrots? Hey, in fact, Abbott, I was born with a silver knife in my, my mouth. You mean a silver spoon? No, knife. We had more money than table manners. In fact, my family had, had money ever since I was at the awkward age. The awkward age? The awkward age. Yep, yep, the awkward age. Well, that's that's when you feel clumsy and homely. Your imagine. clothes don't fit you. And girls, <laughs> girls won't come near you. It started with me, Abbott, when I was about nine. When was it over? I don't know, but I hope soon. I... <laughs> you and your family, a bunch of nobodies. Now, look at these pictures of the Abbots. Now, there's a picture of my father. Well, poor dad, he died just before I was born. He must have known what was coming. Now, never mind that. <laughs> Now, here, here's a picture of my sister, Olive. Yeah. Everyone, she says she looks... They say she looks like Lana Turner, Betty Grable, and Rita Hayworth. Rolled into one. Yep, and when you unroll her, she looks like Wallace Berry. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 never mind. Never mind about that, Costello. I'm proud of my family. They're industrious. And they all work like bees. I'm glad you said that, Abbott. What do you because mean? Because that brings me to my bedtime story for tonight. Is... The story about the grasshopper and the little bee. I'm going to tell it now, and I don't need any help from you, Abbott. You keep your mouth shut the all whole right. story. All right. I tell the story all by myself. Oh, no, all right. Abbott, right. you go over to Bloomingdale's and show them what a blooming idiot looks like. No, I am. Have that out one now, story. Now, once upon a time, once upon a time, there was a happy little bee, and he was just about the nicest little nah, bee. Ah, he was a drone. He, 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 what? Drone, drone. Yeah, drone. If you drone shut up, I'll have you drone out of the studio. All right, go ahead. Now, this little bee had a girlfriend, and his girlfriend would buzz around every morning and gather stuff from the flowers. No, 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 and no, no, no. Stuff stop, from the stop, flowers. stop. The, and... bee, the bee and his girlfriend would gather nectar. Did I have that again? Nectar, nectar. Certainly he nectar. Yeah. It was his girlfriend. It was his girlfriend, Abbott. Right. If he wanted a nectar, let him nectar. Well, you and well, nobody else is going to stop bees from nectar. All right, well, go ahead. Forget about it. Go on with All the right. story. Now, these two bees were in love with each other. They got married, and one day they had a little baby bee. A little bumble from heaven. Uh, a little bumble from heaven. All right, we heard. I thought it was heard. good for another one. Cut that out and go on. <laughs> go on with the story. Well, that was a honey, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm really getting sweet. Okay. Right, well, don't now, me on one it. day the bee, the bee met a grasshopper and they started talking. And the grasshopper had said like this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Said, now, wait a minute, Costello. How can a grasshopper talk? A grasshopper talks by rubbing his hind legs together. Oh, now that's silly. Can you do it? Oh, now, listen, please. <laughs> You're messing up this whole story. Uh, the story of the grasshopper and the bee is very simple. The moral of the story is, be industrious. Now, I told this story to my brother Herman 20 years ago, and he profited by it. Today, he is a very successful man. Yeah? What is your brother Herman doing now? Oh, uh, he's at the J&M dry uh, cleaning plant. The J&M dry cleaning plant? What's he doing there? Dying. Dying? Mm -hmm. That's terrible, Abbott. I didn't even know he was sick. He's not sick. He's dying. <laughs> he's dying, and he ain't sick? No, that's right. <laughs> If he was sick, he couldn't, uh, couldn't be dying. Why not? Well, because it's against the rules of the cleaning plant. Woo! You see, if, <laughs> you see if, if a man is sick, they, they won't let him in the place to die. They want him to die out on the street? No, 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 no. <laughs> they don't want him to die in the street. When he dies, he has to die on the seventh floor. He's got to die on the seventh floor. <laughs> Certainly. Is there an elevator in the joint? No. The nerve of the people making a poor guy walk up seven floors... And still let him go home to die. No, wait, 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 wait. Because his wife won't uh, let him die at home. Oh, he can't even die in his own house. No, 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 no. If there's any dying to be done around the house, his wife does it. 
Wait a minute. What's you mean his wife's got to die, too? Certainly. Look, Abba, what are you trying to do? Buff up the whole family? I got a good mind to bring poor Herman over to my house to die. Oh, he couldn't die at your house. What's wrong with my house? <laughs> my grandmother died there. If it's good enough for her, it's good enough for Herman. Look, Costello, the reason he couldn't die at your house is because you had no die. You've got to have die to die? That's right. That's right. <laughs> this thing gets worse all the time. Look, tell me something, Abba. Why does poor Herman have to die? He dies, he dies for a living. He dies for a living? <laughs> Is he living or dying? Uh, yes. He's been dying for years. He even teaches other people how to die. Woo! He teaches other people you how to die. You mean he teaches people how to die? Yes. That's terrible. Hey, who taught him how to die in the first place? I did. Abbott, you're a devil! Listen. Listen, you imbecile. When I say Herman is dying, I don't mean he's dying like a person dies when he dies. I mean he's dying for a living. And a person that dies for a living is living even though he's dying. Oh! When you say your brother Herman is dying, you don't mean that he's dying like a person dies when he dies. You mean he's dying for a living, and a person that dies for a living is living, though he is dying. Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Time to light up a camel and listen to Skinny Ennis as you talk. Skinny sing. I'll close my eyes to everyone but you. And when I do, I'll see you standing there. I'll lock my heart to any other career. I'll never say yes to a new love affair. I'll close my eyes to everything that's gay. To do nothing to share each lovely day. And through the years, those moments when we're apart, I'll close my eyes and see you in my heart And through the years Those moments when you're apart I'll close my eyes and see you with my heart. Hey, Abbott. What? Abbott, I've got great news. My family is coming over here tonight to visit me. The whole family? All but my Uncle Tom. He can't come. They put him in jail because his wife is as pretty as a picture. No, no, they can't put a man in jail because his wife is as pretty as a picture. They can if he tries to hang her on the wall. <laughs> I'm sorry, madam, but you can't come in here. I know my right. You can't keep me out of here. I want to see Luca Tello. I got to see Luca Tello. I demand to see Luca Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I got on the bus and the driver told me to see Luca Tello, and I don't think there's anybody. Wait a minute. <laughs> Would you mind shutting your mouth so I can see who you are? <laughs> It's my Aunt Alma. Louie, oh, my favorite nephew. My goodness, you look terrible. You've been working too hard. What you need is a few days rest. You're coming home with me and work on the farm for a few days. Work on a farm? What do I have to do? You'll love it, Louis. You get up in the morning at 4 o'clock, milk 40 or 50 cows, clean out the chicken coop, gather the eggs, get 20 or 30 pails of water from the well, chop four or five cords of wood, pile it in the barn, feed the pigs and the goats, clean out the pig pens, and zingo, you're ready for breakfast. Could I have an extra bowl of Wheaties? <laughs> Certainly. Now, right after breakfast, you hitch up the plow, turn over the back 40, and then five or six miles of fence, dig a drainage ditch around the barn, pick and grate a couple of hundred crates of apples, pitch five or six tons of hay, weed the onion patch, cultivate the potatoes, clean out the rabbit coops, whitewash the barn, grind the valves in the tractor, and zingo, you're ready for lunch. All I do is eat. I'll just have a moat. I'll just have a moat. I don't want to waste any time. 
Good. Now, right after lunch, you'll roll out the butter churn. Turn 40 or 50 pounds of butter. Get out the cider press and squeeze out a few barrels of cider. Bale 30 or 40 tons of alfalfa. Round up the turkeys, the geese, and the guinea hens. Spray the apple orchard. Clean out the duck pond. Fill all the lanterns. Bed down the cows. Curry the horses. And zingo. You're ready for supper. Well, we haven't. Curried horse? <laughs> now, right after supper, you hitch up the horse and buggy and go caught in the farmer's daughter that lives down the road. She's a gorgeous redhead with beautiful white skin and a luscious figure. She climbs into the buggy beside you. You ride along in the moonlight. The horse knows the way. And suddenly the horse stops. This gorgeous girl flies over close to you on the buggy seat. She puts her arms around you and you put your arms around her. She strokes your hair and you put your head on her shoulder. And then, do you know what you do? Zingo! I'm ready for lunch. <laughs> You sit over there, Ann. I'm going to rest your hands and face. Hey, look. Hey, look, Costello. Here comes Marilyn Maxwell. Oh, Marilyn Maxwell. Hello, Marilyn. Hello, Hello, Louis, honey. Gee, Marilyn, you look wonderful tonight. That's a beautiful sweater you're wearing. Oh, do you like it? I made it myself. It's really a man's sweater. A man's sweater? You could have fooled me. (laughs) Don't worry, Marilyn. Costello's relatives are coming over from uh, New Jersey. And I'm sure you'd like to meet them. Well, I certainly would. Ah, Louis, someday you and I will be married. And I'll be the wife and you'll be the husband. Marilyn, I wouldn't have it any other way. (laughs) Ah, Louis, Louis, you're so sweet. You have such a lovable personality. You're so, so cuddly and so cute. Um, I hate to leave you. Um... No! There he is, Mike. Louie, my boy, how are you? Hey, Ed, it's my Aunt May. Hello, Aunt May. Louie, my boy, I brought your Uncle Mike and your little nephew, Broccoli, along to see you. Broccoli, kiss your Uncle Louie. What for? I ain't do nothing. <laughs> Where are your manners? Mike, speak to your son. Hello, Broccoli. Uh, shut up! <laughs> Go ahead, May. Tell him why we came over. Louie, you just gotta put Broccoli on your program. He's one of those talented boys in Patterson. That boy has a head on his shoulders. I've seen better heads on a stale glass of beer. <laughs> oh, yeah? I've been listening to your program, fatso. <laughs> What's wrong with it? In plain words, it's safe. Uh, uh, just a minute, Broccoli. Uh, what would you suggest for our program? Pepper McGee and Molly. <laughs> now, you guys are all right for the round haircuts and the long underwear crowd, but the stuff you're doing went out with the high-button shoes, Mac. Broccoli's right. You better listen to it, Louie. What your audience needs is young blood. And if you don't get Broccoli out of here, they're going to get some. Oh, please. <laughs> Please, folks, we've got a program to do. Would you mind waiting outside till we're finished? Quiet, dude. May I show Louis the sketch which you have written for us to do with him tonight? Now, wait a minute. We can't do that. My sponsor wouldn't like it. All right, if your sponsor means more to you than we do, we'll go. We're wait just a poor relation. Now, wait a minute, Aunt You can kick us around. We don't care. Aunt May, wait we a minute. We nothing to you. Aunt May, wait, wait a minute. minute. That's the house you gave us for Christmas. What a house. <laughs> What's wrong with it? It's only got two bathrooms. Don't cry anymore, Aunt May. I'll do anything you say. Oh, good boy, Louie. I was only acting to prove to you that I'm a great actress. Didn't I sound like Lauren Bacalac? Bacalac? <laughs> you mean Lauren Bacall? Sound <laughs> more like Lauren Jitus. Laura, Costello, we're wasting time. What are we going to do? Okay, give me the sketch, Aunt May. <laughs> Listen to this title, Abbott. A brand new love story entitled Beside the Shalimar Under the Garden Gate Waiting in a Cottage Small By a Waterfall in Greenpoint Where the sea is sunny And the dawn comes up Like flying fish In a good old summer time Good night folks We're a little late I ain't gonna do it But Louie This is a love story In this sketch You make love to Marilyn Maxwell I still I'm not Hmm I said Marilyn Maxwell Is the girl you make love to In my sketch Oh well You'll have to give me time To think it over Okay All right Let me see that thing, Louie. Mm-hmm. Mm. Costello, this looks good. Look, the scene opens with you and Marilyn in a canoe, drifting down a beautiful stream. You're in the stern and she's in the bow. 
Can't you make it a rowboat and get us both in the back seat? No. It's got to be a canoe. Then rip out all the sheets and make it every man for himself. Quiet. Marilyn looks into your eyes and says, Come to me, Lewis. Come to me, my love. I drop the paddle and make for it. No, 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 you don't drop the paddle. But I can buy a new paddle for a buck and a half. No, 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 not, not yet. You park the canoe under a clump of willow trees because that's where you're going to kiss her. And you know that no one can see you. Oh, am I a stinker? No, 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 no. Now, Marilyn leans forward. Her lips are parted. She says, I'm yours from now on. And now, do you know what you do? Zingo, I'm ready for lunch. <laughs> You're a city slicker. I'm the village idiot. That's what I am. Please, Costello, you look at Marilyn. And slowly you begin inch away, way forward, inch by inch, inch by inch. Get me over there. I only rented the boat for an hour. No, no, no. <laughs> now the moment has come. You're underneath the clump of trees. You take her in your arms. You look up suddenly. You see that a tree is beginning to fall. You don't want her to be frightened by the falling tree. So you whisper tenderly in her ear. Sketch, Louis, my boy. That's the kind of writing that belongs to the ages. Yes, the ages between five and seven. Ah, uh, take that sketch away from them, Mom. These two boobs will last it up anyway. Now, Neither listen. one of them knows how to act. Why, you Wait a minute, Albert. Don't, don't. Let me talk to the boy. Broccoli. Yeah. Come here to your Uncle Louis. How would you like to be on the radio with me? Now you're talking sense. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Well, you can help me with my imitation. Yeah? The first one will be that of the Australian auk. An Australian auk? How do we do it? Just put your neck between my two hands. Uh-huh. That's it. Ah! <laughs> and no jury will ever convict me! Camel presents lovely Marilyn Maxwell from Metro Golden Mayor, producers of Lady in the Lake. For Camel fans everywhere, Marilyn sings, He's Just My Kind. Why he left me, I don't know. I love him more than I could show. cigarette register with you. Why, in your T-zone, of course. That's T for taste and T for throat. Your proving ground for any cigarette. And when you try a camel on your T-zone, your taste will register the pleasure of camel's rich, full flavor of superbly blended choice tobaccos. Your throat will register the pleasure of camel's own cool mildness. So why don't you try a camel on your T-zone now? 
See if you don't exclaim like so many other happy smokers, camels suit my T-zone to a T. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Well, Costello, I hope you're satisfied. You brought your relatives over, broke up our show, probably got us wrong with a sponsor and allowed your nephew, Broccoli, to publicly insult me. Me, your best friend. Why? Why? Why do you do things like that? Oh, I'm a bad boy. <laughs> well, Lewis, here I am. I'm ready to meet your relatives. Too late, Marilyn. I'll probably never see them again. They did a terrible thing. I'm afraid they got us in wrong with our sponsor. Well, Lewis, honey, what do your relatives do in New Jersey? They're jiggers in a burlesque show. <laughs> jiggers? You mean they do a dancing act? No. They stand outside of the burlesque show, and when the police come, they holler, Jiggers! The cops! <laughs> All kidding aside, Merlin, I love my family, and I love my neighbors, too. I love everybody. Friends, Romans, and countrymen, lend me your ears, your eyes, your noses. Lend them your ears, your eyes, and your noses. And he wants to talk to you. Here it comes. Go ahead. Here it comes. Go ahead. Costello, oh. this is your sponsor. I heard your family on the show tonight, and I want Please, you to Mr. know... Sponsor, it isn't my fault. But I want... I'm to... sorry about the whole thing. I'm sorry it happened. Mr. Sponsor, I didn't know. Now, just Please a minute. Please don't fire us, Mr. Sponsor. Now, just a minute. It's... Just a minute. Mr. Sponsor, 
I promise you it will never happen again. We want it to happen again. Those people are funnier than you are. You should take them to California with you. Goodbye. No, no, not that. Hey, I'm not. We'll be back in just a moment for Camel Cigarettes. During the war, the makers of Camel Cigarettes sent a total of more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. Now, free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week, the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Tuskegee, Alabama, U.S. Army Tilton General Hospital, Fort Dix, New Jersey, U.S. Naval Hospital, Bremerton, Washington, U.S. Marine Hospital, Portland, Maine, and Veterans Hospital, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Camel broadcasts go out to the United States three times a week, a rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are still stationed and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with the final word. Well, Costello, next week we'll be back broadcasting from Hollywood. Uh, do you think the folks will be glad to see us, Lou? Abbott, the last time I went back, they welcomed me with a big celebration. They burned a streetcar in my honor. They did? Yes. Fortunately, I got out of it just in time. <laughs> Good night, folks. Good night. Good night, Good night baby. Everybody. Be right home next week, Mom. Pop and Good night, baby. Pipe appeal. That's what Prince Albert smoking tobacco gives a pipe. Save thousands of happy Prince Albert smokers. Yes, it's Prince Albert that has the rich, full-bodied flavor that smokers love. It's Prince Albert that combines that rich flavor with cool mildness. Prince Albert is specially treated to ensure against tongue bite. So remember those initials, P.A. They stand for Prince Albert and for Pipe Appeal. Saturday night, be sure to hear Prince Albert's grand old opera with its sensational singer of American folk songs, Red Foley. Tune in to NBC Saturday night for Grand Old Opry with the Duke of Paducah, Minnie Pearl, and Red Foley. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show from Hollywood brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try camels in your T-zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a T. C-A-M-E-L-S America's housing shortage has returned veterans and their families harder than anyone else. And although a record-breaking building program is underway, the need is so tremendous that it'll be some time before the shortage is eased. You can help the veteran by sharing your home if you have extra space, by giving veterans first chance at renting or buying, by listing vacancies with your local veterans housing center, and by not discriminating against veterans with children. This is Bert Parks in New York, wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camels. <laughs> 